Welcome to ISO 45001 in 45 minutes, where we unpack clause eight entitled operations. So welcome to ISO 45001 in 45 minutes. In this session, we're gonna be looking at clause eight entitled operations. So on the back end of clause six, we've identified our hazards and risks. We've looked at some of the hierarchy of controls. We now want to operationalize our system. So we're going to see how we can apply the hierarchy of controls to make sure that we prevent injury and ill health and we provide and maintain a safe and healthy working environment. So clause eight one general, looks at how you're going to control the processes, that you have to provide operating criteria to control the processes. You need to retain records that the processes are in fact controlled. You need to consider ergonomics or the man and machine interaction. You need to coordinate with others where a workplace has multiple parties working together. So the general overview in clause 8.1, we're going to be looking at how you're going to use the various different operational controls that you have within your organization that you've already identified to make sure that you meet the requirements, the commitments that you've made in your health and safety policy. If we go over to clause 812, we're looking at eliminating hazards and reducing OSH risks. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why does this appear here and not in clause six? Well, in essence, the hierarchy of controls has already been considered in clause six when you did your risk assessment. But what they're talking about here is they want you to consider the hierarchy of controls in an ongoing basis of how you're going to apply them to every aspect of your business. So as an example, if you've got lifting equipment, they want you to consider how you can eliminate or how you can substitute or what engineering controls you can use when it comes to lifting equipment, what administrative controls, operating procedures, policies, um, procedures, work instructions, etc., and what personal protective equipment um, will be required for lifting equipment. If we also ha then had to apply the same to the uh, storage, handling, and usage of hazardous chemical substances, again, how you would apply the hierarchy of controls to manage your hazardous substances, how you would eliminate, how you would substitute, what engineering controls, what administrative controls, policies, procedures, work instructions, and PPE you would utilize to make sure that you meet the commitments of your health and safety policies. So that's what we're looking at in clause 812. When we move over to clause 813, it's entitled management of change. Now, as an auditor, this is one of the areas that we've identified where a lot of businesses fall short, is the standard expects you to ensure that any change that takes place in the organization takes place in a controlled manner. So if you're introducing new products or services or processes, you've started work at a new location, there's changes in surroundings, the organization, work conditions, equipment, or the workforce, they want you to consider a few things. What what information do you have on the hazards? What are the applicable legal and other requirements? So what uh, triggers are brought about by the change? So you'll have to identify legal requirements, additional hazards, what additional controls you're going, uh, going to consider in terms of the change management. And then also changes in legal information. So if you get a legal update, how that legal update is then going to knock on into your system and how you're going to consider what changes are applicable, what procedures need to be trained, what knock-on effects, what training, what awareness you need to consider by virtue of legal changes. Also changes in information about hazards or advancements in knowledge and technology. So in summary, all changes need to take place in a controlled manner, assess what the changes, identify the hazards, put a strategy in place, make sure that you use your system that you've already developed in the previous clauses to deploy that change strategy throughout the business. Then moving over into 614, so procurement. Here we look at contractors and we look at outsourcing. Again, a significant high risk area for most businesses is that contractor control because you could have good stringent controls over your own operations, but when contractors come onto site, this again can be one of those areas of exposure. So they expect you through clause 614 and procurement to have a look at product safety. We're not just talking about contractors, but if you're going to procure a substance or an agent or um, some uh, new piece of equipment that you're bringing onto site, how is that safety information communicated to the supplier 
so that when the piece of equipment arrives, it has all the relevant or required safety devices in place that are working. So we're talking about product safety, product safety requirements that they should be determined and communicated to suppliers. In line with that, as part of the procurement process, we're also talking about contractor control and those activities that could, could affect you, how contractors' activities could affect you and your workers, and or how there the contractors' activities could affect yourselves or other people within the organization. You also need to control outsource processes. So as an example, if you've got a call center um, elsewhere within the organization, how are you going to um, ensure that hazards and risks uh, our control within those areas, and again, that you're meeting the commitments that you've made within your health and safety policy. Now we move over into clause 8.2, emergency preparedness and response. Now remember, we've already identified a lot of hazards and risks in clause 6, and we would have, by virtue of that risk assessment process, identified a magnitude of unwanted events. So because we're storing flammable substances or because there's machine friction that could result in fires and or explosions, those are all those unwanted events. The unwanted events from your risk assessment could roll up and through into your emergency plan. Your emergency plan is a, another form of procedure, another form of SOP to control those unwanted events. So within 8.2, they're wanting you to develop a process where you have an emergency response plan, where people are trained, you have periodic drills to test the capability and evaluate performance. You need to take actions to continually improve your emergency plan. It needs to be communicated to relevant parties. And again, you need to consider the capabilities of interested parties and involve them in planning. So as an example there, what happens if you've got a neighbor who is a major hazardous installation? You need to consider involving them in the planning around emergencies. What about your local municipality or the local government regulator and agencies who support you in the event of an emergency? Do they have suitable equipment? Or some of the things that we see within towns is the ring main patterns for, for water, for fire hydrants have failed. So therefore, the capabilities are reduced. You need to consider implementing your own water storage tanks and pumps, etc. So you need to have a look at all of those interested parties that support you, could influence you or affect you by virtue of an emergency. So here's just an overview of Clause 8 and the operational control. So we've looked at Clause 8.1, where we're looking at the general overview. You need to have operating criteria. You need to retain records. And then we looked at the hierarchy of controls. And again, they want you to consider how you can deploy the hierarchy of controls to every single activity, product, service, substance, whatever within your business, and how you can eliminate substitute engineering controls, administrative controls, or PPE. We've looked at procurement management. We've looked at operational control. And we've also looked at change management and also emergency planning and prevention. So that's just an idea of how you could sequence Clause 8 together and what some of the inputs and outputs are. So there's an overview of Clause 8 entitled Operations.